This guy will transform the way you think about mathematics. He was a self-taught mathematician who not only learned really complex math subjects in depth, he actually significantly developed the area. He impressed professors from Cambridge University with his incredible talent and ability to think in a way no mathematician has before him. And the most incredible thing is, he did not simply win a genetic lottery by being a genius. His unique approach to mathematics that led to his groundbreaking discoveries was only possible because he did not have a formal education in the subject, leading us to question the system we have in place. The other day I was actually wondering about whether it is possible to study mathematics by yourself. And I mean, not only study it, but actually be able to advance it. It seems impossible without university. You would be right to ask that. There are several examples of people who were able to do so. My personal favorite is the story of Srinivasa Ramanujan. So you're telling me that this Srinivasa was able to not only study mathematics by himself, but actually advance it? Very much, yes. I'll tell you how he did that. But first, understand just how impressive this story is. He came from a small village in South India, from a modest family. He attended various schools in Kumbakonam. Although he excelled in mathematics, winning awards, his focus on mathematics was so intense that he neglected other subjects, leading to academic difficulties in those areas. This singular dedication to mathematics ultimately resulted in Ramanujan losing his scholarship at the Government Arts College. Whoa! You know, it's important to note that during Ramanujan's time, the curriculum in a college like the Government Arts College would have primarily covered foundational subjects, much like the high school levels today. It wasn't anything near Oxford or Cambridge. So, how was he able to study such advanced math? At age 15, Ramanujan obtained a synopsis of elementary results in pure and applied mathematics by G. S. Carr. This book, a collection of 5,000 theorems, was pivotal. These theorems were stated largely without proof, so not a conventional textbook, but a summary of results. Since the book did not provide proof, Ramanujan had to rely on his intuition and creativity to understand and extend these results. This process was instrumental in shaping his unique approach to mathematics, which was often based on intuition and unconventional methods, since he investigated these results on his own, often trying to prove them independently. The lack of formal mathematical training allowed Ramanujan to explore mathematics in a very original and creative way. His insights were deep and surprising, even to experienced mathematicians. Right. I think the main thing to understand here is that he really didn't like being limited by the methods of formal education. It is the fact that his thinking was not limited by the methods of university that allowed him to think freely. But how did he become so known? Well, he published his first paper in the Journal of the Indian Mathematical Society, which started to bring him some recognition in Indian mathematical circles. In 1913, he began to correspond with G. H. Hardy, a prominent mathematician at Cambridge University. Hardy was initially skeptical. I mean, who wouldn't be with a person who has no credentials? But he soon recognized Ramanujan's extraordinary talent. Hardy invited him to Cambridge in 1914, marking the beginning of a fruitful four-year collaboration with Hardy. His work spent various areas of mathematics, including infinite series, number theory, and continued fractions. Unfortunately, Ramanujan's health deteriorated in the cold climate of England, where he was diagnosed with tuberculosis and a severe vitamin deficiency. He returned to India in 1919, his health further declining. Ramanujan died in 1920, when he was just 32. Well, that's sad. Still, you didn't answer my question. How was he able to advance mathematics? Oh, right. He contributed to many areas, but I'll share one which I personally find most interesting number theory. But before that, if you're enjoying this video, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. Do you know anything about partitioning a number? Yeah, it's all the positive number combinations that make up a number. Like if we take 4, it can be partitioned into 5 parts. 4, just a number itself, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 2 plus 1 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Exactly! In number theory, you need to find the partitions of numbers. But because often they are much larger than 4, it used to be quite a difficult task, since you'd have to count each possible combination. But Ramanujan, 
along with Hardy, would develop a formula that would allow mathematicians to swiftly calculate the approximate number of partitions for each number. The partition function p of n gives the number of distinct ways to express the integer n as a sum of positive integers. If n equals 4, the partitions are these. So p of 4 is 5, because there are 5 different ways to partition the number 4. This symbol means it's asymptotically equal to. It's used to show that the right-hand side of the equation is an approximation that gets closer and closer to the true value of p of n as n gets larger, tending to infinity. The fraction is a multiplying factor in the formula. It decreases as n increases, adjusting the rate at which the approximation grows. And lastly, this part is the exponential part of the formula, where e is the base of natural logarithms. And pi is, you know, pi. And this means the square root of 2n over 3. Essentially, what you would do is plug in the number that you want to know the partitions of. All right. So say if I wanted to take the number 1000, I would plug it in instead of n. So the formula becomes... This result implies that there are approximately 2.44 times 10 to the 35 first ways to partition the number 1000 into sums of positive integers. Remind me, why was this special? Well, it was formulated thanks to Ramanujan's unique methods that he developed while studying by himself. It allowed him to notice patterns other mathematicians were unable to see. Again, this was not his only contribution, but only a piece of his journey as a great mathematician. His unorthodox methods and mathematical intuition led to various groundbreaking discoveries. It's great to know that thinking outside of the box is the way to go. Especially nowadays, with so much material available to learn. Right. I truly believe that universities shouldn't be the gods of education. If a guy in a tiny Indian village was able to get to the level that he did, nowadays no one has any excuses. Sure, he was a genius, you may say. But I think that with the amount of information available and the connection we have to each other through the internet, Many more people nowadays will be called geniuses. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna love this one. See you there.